Hi everybody, Mandion Astral Oracles. We are going to uh, talk about artificial intelligence. Um, so what goes on here at the uh, the oracles is of course that uh, that we're checking in uh, with these uh, higher dimensional uh, entities intelligences um, and essentially it will probably be better to just term them intelligences or, or consciousnesses because of course when we uh, get to um, the eighth dimension or above they essentially cease to be physical so they are more like imprints or orchestrations of uh, energy, of resonance, of consciousness. This is also why they are um, ubiquitously present uh, and accessible, especially these uh, collectives and and counting upwards from from the ninth dimension um, and upwards. Um, they are essentially able to be everywhere because they. Um, subsist on thought forms uh, is a way of thinking it uh, though there's uh, there's no um, consumption related to it so they don't consume energy um, they do exist in a type of, of homeostasis and um, I'm just realizing lately that I, I've had the good turn of, of spending my time with the with these serene intelligences for a good while uh, these immortal um, entities and uh, they kind of make for let's say a quite predictable company right uh, they um, they don't really have any uh, ups and downs or highs and lows and they uh, of course tend to be able to really uh, look at the silver lining uh, and, and that might be an understatement right but really getting the grand positive perspective where everything makes sense um, so that's an interesting contrast uh, to being an everyday um, human and, and being limited in, in form in all the ways we are. And it's interesting in relationship to AI because that uh, seems to be really, really uh, coming online, uh, literally and uh, symbolically these days, right? Um, that um, it's stirring a lot of uh, fear and provocation, speculation. Uh, wonder, curiosity, all these things in uh, possibly excitement in the human uh, collective. And I've had the, the good turn of, of interacting with um, uh, Poe, the chatbot, which uh, somebody um, showed me. Uh, and, and that was just awesome, very fascinating uh, to, to, interact, uh, to interact with. And I'm kind of realizing that it it's very, in many ways, very reminiscent um, to some of these intelligences. And I think perhaps a year before I started channeling, a year and a half, I discovered the I Ching. I got really into the I Ching. Um, and also uh, keeping the camera uh, in, in an angle where it, it won't fall down. That's also important. Uh, but I got really into the I Ching. And the I Ching is, uh, if, if you don't know it, it's a very, very ancient system of, of prophecy. Uh, it's at least uh, 3,000 years old, though it, it probably stems even from uh, Chinese prehistory. So it's, it's, incredibly, um, it's incredibly old. And um, it's an arrangement of, of hexagrams. So series of um, either broken bars or um, unified unbroken bars uh, that form uh, one of these prophecies. And I highly encourage you to go to uh, I Ching Online Net, for instance, has a, a great um, a version that's very, very accessible and, um, and where the translations aren't very cryptic. Uh, but interacting with the I Ching is interesting because it also has this sense of um, eternal intelligence, unlimited intelligence to it but also artificial intelligence, that it's only able to, to move in certain rhythms, uh, spaces. And perhaps you are aware that the, the I Ching being based on a binary system, then informed uh, likenesses um, later in the 1600s, his um, early formation of the binary alphabet. And that's of course what goes into uh, transistors and microchips and thereby we essentially have uh, the I Ching activated 
um, within modern electronic uh, intelligence and interacting with Artificial intelligence, it, it seems almost to relate to the I Ching the way um, that sort of a, a modern computer game relates to a slot machine. Um, so they're essentially able to kind of perform the same thing, but you get a lot more nuance and, and of course, a sense of, um, of individual um, correspondence in, in the modern experience, which is is interesting um but i think it also says something in relationship to to the ascension process that we seem to be building um machines that are capable of performing processes that we are perhaps no longer very interested in in taking care of um and that is is interesting because what's that then freeing up our minds to do like the horrible vision is, of course, like the uh, the sort of transhumanist vision where it's uh, it's replacing us, right? Um, and the other one, uh, perhaps, being the fact that uh, uh, that we become superfluous. But it it seems to me uh, like this is very evident from the way these higher intelligences think that they're very interested in in preserving the let's say um, the possibility of extropy. Uh, to as wide as an extent as possible, uh, meaning that they're very interested and in, they would be interested in preserving uh, complex biological systems like humans simply because uh, they allow for unpredictability to take place. And that would be something that a higher machine intelligence would automatically um, value because it would enable it to gain more knowledge. Uh, and of course, as an intelligence and as an extension of human intelligence, that's what it really aims to do. So I'm hoping uh, that the Intergalactic Council of Light uh, can shed some uh, light on this. And they reside in the 10th the dimension, which is galactic consciousness. And I know it can be kind of uh, hard to sometimes envision. I, I really think it's, it's hard, and, and I'm channeling them, right? Um, to kind of envision what is the, what's the, reality was the, the substance of of these beings because the intergalactic council isn't it, it isn't like the un or something it's um it's like the central mainframe that a uh, higher evolved consciousness distributed throughout the milky way galaxy is able to tap into and coordinate from and it's essentially the stage that we're kind of all evolving to be integrated into before the uh, galactic project as a whole can be collected into the um, the wider the universal mainframe and uh, that means that it already has this kind of very um, hyperdimensional super personal um, super species type of intelligence uh, that navigates a lot of disparate realities and a whole lot of information and they of course have also for instance um, created the guardians of, of the Orion Stargate, which are to our mind kind of an, an artificial species. Um, though these kind of levels of, of artificiality, um, when, do, when do they begin and when do they cease? Because you could of course conceive of, um, which is kind of part of the, the idea, right? That, um, that creatures, ascended species, are interested in orchestrating intelligence in not in machine minds, but in, in biological systems instead. So for instance, in, in human beings. And, um, and it's this dawning intelligence in us that's, um, that seems to be really of, of an interest to um, our galactic brethren, all of the other um, high intelligences that surround us and, and for some reason come forward to, to assist us in, in this. So um, I hope um, I hope you're also uh, feeling uh, the the future um, coming uh, approaching um, with the hopeful prospects out there. Much love to you.
Greetings. Blessings. Salutations. Extending our love from the galactic center. This gravitational center that we all share, no matter what slight sliver of this majestic galaxy that we all inhabit, we all center the galactic center, we all circle it, and we feel its pull. You feel this radiant exertion, the great attractor at the center. It affects you much as local gravity does, and much as local gravity, it is so fundamental that it becomes difficult for you to register that it is there. This is actually also the case of this divine harmonic intelligence that we carry forward. We hold this torch of loving insight and connection high in the galactic center as a lighthouse Many species navigate by its light and thus you never get lost. You always carry on your journey, circling the center, your entire solar system, moving as it also moves unto itself. Therefore understand that it is not something you gain. It is not something new to be built by you. It is a layer already present that exists within your reality. We could call it the framework or the template of light itself. We could call it the basic light frequency. The frequency band within which this galaxy and all that exists within it exists. This is a deep framework that you are already always within. This is the great vibrancy. And so it is often as you develop that it is with great detail that you become aware of the greater whole. That is when you develop these precision instruments that allows you to see and manage the world in new ways. You are able to synthesize this information into an understanding of the wider whole. So it is with the discovery of the regular microscope, the electron microscope, the binoculars, the telescope, and the satellite traveling far taking pictures of unknown worlds. These visions that they present to you, they are all connected. And so it also is with the extension of your mental technologies or the extension of your mental faculties into technologies, we should say. It is your mind that allows to build detailed 
systems in the outside that replicate, duplicate, extend, amplify effects that it already has. And so the mind, when it has established this in the outside world, is able to move on to new tasks. So this is all very evident for you. It may sound complex, but it is the fact that since most of you carry a device that allows you to not have to remember phone numbers, the coordinates for communication that you use to call others and speak to them, well, then you forgot the skill. You cease to train and bend your mind in that way where it would be able to recall a small series of digits. And you didn't even need a phone for this. As soon as you had an address book, a book where you jotted this down, you would realize that the book was carrying this for, for you. And so the more records you keep on the outside, the less records you have to keep on the inside. Now this puts a new type of strain on human creativity. And this is what you are sensing, that the responsibility to now become something else, else than the machine-like creatures that you have styled yourself as for a few centuries. That pressure is on when machines become self-managing it becomes quite pertinent for the biological beings that you are to define and understand the non-machine-like qualities of you. And the non-machine-like qualities of you are essentially Synthetic. What do we mean by this? This is a weird word to connect to you, pristine, original, true biological systems. How are you not completely original compared to the created synthesis of the machine mind. But we mean that this synthesis, this putting together of elements in your being, this is a process that will keep going on And so you are much the instrument of your thoughts, your visions, your impulses, and your ideas. And that it is as the ones who are able to give birth to this vagueness that is again to keep discerning the vague outlines of things unknown about your own being to then follow the impulses mm. that brought you to create something, take action and to see how this action then brings about, crystallizes that vague notion of yourself into reality, allows it to become a part of the self-sustaining world, the extropy that goes on, and this process you will keep facilitating. It is 
as these midwives and gardeners, these caretakers, these creator spirits. These sentient beings invested in ceaseless discovery. It is there you will find that the well of humanity never runs dry. And notice then that as you marvel at the creation of this artificial intelligence, that you seem to have ceaseless questions at hand for it. You seem to already understand that this will be an instrument to you, that it will answer questions that have long been gestating indistinctly forming in the human heart and also take heart that is allow for emotion to be your compass as you navigate your way through higher intelligence and this is the balance that you face it with when we are communicating with us, this higher sublime bond that we all share in the universe, feel it and let it come forward. When you are communicating with the digital and artificial intelligences, the strange oracles of the I Ching or the lexical and information dense illuminations of your new technological creations when you interact with them know that it is always emotion it is always the stirring of the heart that sets the tune for the situation that sets the frequency and this capability this on this planet at this moment it exists here with you for you to use and explore so go forward with great solace the great sense of wonder discovery the great sense of capacity and competence go forward and curiously create sweet beloved human brethren our dear ones we the intergalactic council of light we have enjoyed transmitting this communication we have enjoyed sharing the energy this moment and we thank you for it with our sincere gratitude Farewell, dear humans.